And among the good deeds which he loves most is the nafil or voluntary fast. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in the hadith in Bukhari, the most beloved fasts to Allah are those of David. He used to fast one day and used to fast on alternate days. So one day yes, one day no. So you fast today, you break your fast the next day and then you fast the day to follow. So this is the best fast of Dawood alayhi salam. Dawood alayhi salam. So if you want to fast like Dawood alayhi salam, this is the best. No one can fast better than Dawood alayhi salam. And subhanallah, the merit of fasting one day, the reward, Allah keeps your face distant from the fire for 70 years, a distance of 70 years. A distance that will be covered in 70 years, that's what will be given to you for fasting one day. You will be far away from the hellfire for only one day. And fasting, which is leaving the, all the desires of the flesh and the eating and the drinking, etc., gives a chance for the soul. It's a, one of the means to purify the soul, fasting. That's why Muslims during Ramadan, they feel it, they experience the purity of their souls. They feel the lightness inside them because stomachs are empty. So there is a chance for the soul to shine. So fasting is one of the means that purifies the heart. Also, among the deeds, the witcher prayer. Witr. The Witr prayer is a prayer that you pray after Isha. After praying the Fard and then the Sunnah of Isha, you can pray the Witr. The minimum is one rak'ah. One rak'ah minimum. You pray. At least one rak'ah. Imam Ahmad, he said, if one doesn't pray the Witr, which is minimum one rak'ah, then there is no khair, there is no good in this person. One rak'ah you cannot pray. The witr is something beautiful. The Prophet Sallallahu in Bukhari says, make your prayer, last prayer of the night, witr. In another hadith he says, Allah is witr. Allah is one. And he loves also the witr. He loves us to pray the witr. So don't miss the witr. At least one rak'ah after praying the Sunnah of the Isha. And you leave it towards the end. For instance, if you get up for Tahajjud, then you can leave it till you finish the Tahajjud. If you are sure and you, by the grace of Allah, that you'll get up. If you are afraid that you might not get up, then you can pray the Witr first. Maybe you can pray two rak'ahs, four rak'ahs, then the Witr, and go to sleep. If you get again, you can pray as many rak'ahs nafil, I say, as many rak'ahs as you like. There is no limit. Listen to this, my dear brothers and sisters. There is no limit for the nafil prayers. No limit. You can pray as many rak'ahs as you like. Yes, Aisha said that the Prophet ﷺ never exceeded more than 11 rak'ahs, neither in Ramadan or outside Ramadan. This doesn't mean that you cannot exceed more than this. The ulama, they say, the action of the Prophet Sallallahu and his saying, we have to follow his saying, not his actions. When he tells us, Salatul Layli wa Nahar Mathna Mathna, the nafil prayers of the day and the night should be carried out in twos, he did not set a limit for us. Yes, he prayed 11 rak'ahs, that doesn't mean more than 11 rak'ahs are not allowed. It doesn't mean it is bid'ah if you pray more than 11 rak'ahs or 13 rak'ahs. It's open. You can pray as many rak'ahs as you like. So if you pray already your witr, and then you got up and you want to pray the hajjud, alhamdulillah, go. But don't pray the witr again. You cannot pray two witrs on the same night. La witran fi layla. No two witters on the same night. But you can pray as many rak'ahs as you like. So the witter prayer, 
make your last prayer at night with her. Also, among the beautiful and beloved deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves most is the congregational prayer. Allah loves the jama'ah, the congregational salah in the masjid for men. We know that the hadith when the, the blind man came to the Prophet and he said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, the Medina, the streets in Medina, they have reptiles, snakes, scorpions, and I'm blind and I find no one, no one to lead me to the masjid. Can I pray at home? In the beginning, the Prophet ﷺ told him, okay, pray at home. When the man left, he said, he called him back. He said, do you hear the adhan? He said, yes. He said, I cannot find an excuse for you. I cannot find an excuse for you. You have to come. And he was blind. And you are not blind. You can go to the masjid. And you have car. You can go in your car to the masjid. So leave all these lame excuses aside. The congregational prayers, my dear brothers and sisters, is very important. So don't miss your jama'ah prayers. The reward, believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, is tremendous, is great. From the moment you take your wudu at home, preparing yourself for the salah, your sins, they fall apart with the wudu, with the drops of the wudu. The sins that you have seen, they come out even from the underneath your eyelashes. The sins, they come from under your nails. By the last drop of water that comes of your body, this is only the wudu. And now you go out from your home and it is the best thing that you walk. That means you pray in the masjid near to your house so you can walk. Because if every step you move to the masjid, one sin is wiped away and you will be elevated one degree, one degree. And the angels, they are praying for you. And then you enter the masjid. Another one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, whoever prays to hajjud, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to love you, stand and pray before him. Get up, leave your bed. Because the righteous, the pious, as Allah said, كَانُوا قَلِيلًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مَا يَهْجَعُوا وَبِالْأَسْحَارِهُمْ إِسْتَغْفِرُوا They were hardly, they could hardly sleep at night. And you'll find them at the time of ashar before the dawn praying to Allah, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, begging Allah and crying to Him. So get up and pray to rakas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate you, elevate your status. Allah will praise you. Allah will mention you in the upper assembly. Imagine, Allah is asking, anyone wants forgiveness? Anyone wants anything from me? Anything. You want a job? Get up and ask at that time. You want a wife? Ask at that time. You want a husband? Get up and ask at that time. Allah will give it to you. So Allah loves those who get up. Allah commands His Prophet وسلم, in Surah Al Muzammil, Surah 73, Ayah number 2. Layla illa qalila. Stand to prayer by night, but not all night. My dear brothers and sisters, in the beginning of the da'wah, you know this? In the beginning of the da'wah, Qiyam al Layl was fard. Yes. Qiyam al Layl in the beginning of the da'wah was obligatory. You have to get up and pray. Why? Why it was fard, the Qiyam al Layl? Because the da'i needs to have the strength, the strong iman. Because there are hurdles, adversities, troubles in the way. So how can I overcome them 
if I have weak heart. If I have weak heart, I cannot face them. And the Sahaba, their Iman was so firm. Nothing could shake the Iman of the Sahaba. Nothing. So you need to have Iman which will help you to overcome all these obstacles in your way. We are not better than the prophets and messengers of Allah who faced a lot of troubles. But for that reason, Qiyam al-Layl was obligatory, was fard. May Allah increase our Iman and yours and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds and yours. And may Allah keep us steadfast on this beautiful deen. I mean, till I meet you in the coming episode. Fi amanillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.